Hey, Mr. James from Charm City Karate. Thought for the day is this. What was your martial art invented for? Okay, might sound kind of wonky to some of you guys, and I know I've talked about this a little bit before, but here's the thing. Almost every martial art was invented for something. Okay, now, some martial arts were invented for, let's say, peasants with no weapons. All right, but that's a pretty broad topic. All right, so you need to like really look at your martial art. For instance, capoeira. Okay, slaves, but very specific subset of that. The hands were chained, the feet were not. That's why you have all those handstand kicks and fancy footwork, and everything's about feet to the head. Okay. It's not just that feet to the head is an effective weapon. It's about the fact that the hands were manacled and they couldn't do a lot with them. All right. If you look at the traditional Japanese arts and you look at the wide bases uh, and the big power strokes and stuff, think about where they're coming from. You're talking about guys fighting in big lacquered armor. If you had small, fast movements, A, they're going to get just sucked up by that armor. I don't know if you ever tried to fight in armor, put on a big set of like hockey pads or football pads, you try to fight. You can't do real small, quick motions in those. The armor will eat them, the, all that extra weight, the pads, you need bigger, wider moves especially with something that's layered the way lacquer armor is. So, you need big, broad moves. And you're trying to punch somebody enough to hurt them, or at least stagger them and knock them back, maybe so you can pick up your sword and go after them. That's what it was invented for. Two guys in armor fighting. Okay, now, you're talking two guys in t-shirts, they probably don't need that exact same kind of stuff. Okay? You wonder why it's not as effective in, say, a cage fight? It's because it wasn't invented for a cage fight. All right? Now, one thing, don't tell me you study MMA. That's not a martial art. I don't have anything against MMA. I love it. MMA is not a martial art. It's mixed martial arts. That's not a martial art. There are martial arts within MMA, MMA itself, not a martial art, okay? You can study Muay Thai, boxing, jiu-jitsu, judo, there's lots of arts in it that you can put together and mix them up and have mixed martial arts. You can't study MMA, just like you can't fight UFC. It's the dumbest thing when people come up and go, do you fight UFC? Nobody fights UFC. It's stupid. You can fight in the UFC. You can be a fighter for UFC. You don't fight UFC. Anyway, moving on. All right, so Taekwondo, big jump spinning kicks, things that some people think look really stupid. Why do they have them? Because again, you have unarmed peasants trying to knock guys off horses. Here comes a dude with a horse, and he's got a sword, and he's going to kill your family. Well mom, brother, and sister have some farm implements that could get this guy if you can get him off the horse. So, you jump up in the air, you kick this fool off the horse as he comes riding along, they run out with some pitchforks, some other long sticks, they stab him up, woohoo, win. Now, two guys fighting each other using jump, flying, spinning kicks, I don't know. But, for what it was invented for, very effective, nice martial art. Judo can be very effective. What was it really invented for? Hmm. It's the gentle way. He was really inventing judo as a form of exercise and competition that would keep people from getting hurt. Yeah. No, really, to keep people from getting hurt. That's why things like the flying leg scissor were taken out. Hmm. Check it out. Aikido isn't even supposed to have a competition element to it. So, 
what I want you to do is think about why your martial art was invented. Some people don't know. It's worth the research for a couple of reasons. One, it's cool. And if you're going to be a serious martial artist, you should know why your martial art was put together. Two, it can help you understand why you're doing what you're doing. If you're doing a form or a kata or a self-defense sequence or something like that, and you hit a spot where you're going, why is this here? Or what's going on? Or you can't figure something out. If you understand why the form was invented, a lot of times that will help you get why it's like that. Okay? For example, a lot of the big idea behind Kempo is multiples. Okay? Multiple attackers, multiple strikes, multiple attacks. All right? So, for instance, when you start doing Kempo, you have one attacker and he's kind of stupid, and you hit him a lot. Later on, your attacker gets smarter and he starts trying to hit you multiple times, and you hit him a lot. Then you get multiple attackers. More than one guy comes after you, and you hit them a lot. All right? So, with that understanding, you can kind of start to figure things out within the art. Something doesn't make sense to you, you go, oh, why am I only hitting this guy once? It doesn't make any sense. I'm not supposed to just hit a guy once. I'm supposed to do this, this, this. Ed Parker liked to show everything. He had this thing called category completion, which meant that if he showed you how to defend yourself against somebody grabbing your wrist, he would show you how to defend yourself against a guy grabbing your wrist with their right hand, your wrist with their left hand, your wrist with both their hands, from the front, from the side, from the rear, your other wrist with their right, their left, from the front, from the side, from the rear, both your wrists with their right, with their left, okay? He's going to cover every possible wrist grab, and then he's going to do some of the ones where you're like, really? Two guys grab my wrist from over there? It doesn't even make sense. Okay? And then he's going to cover some other weird stuff. So sometimes you're doing something and you're like, this doesn't really make sense. But if you look at it from the perspective of he wanted to make sure you were totally covered and you haven't seen this yet. Oh, that's why it's there. Because I haven't seen that yet. That's it. It's the only reason it's there. Now I get it. Fits in with the idea of the art. We can move on. So, if you're looking at your art and you're thinking, why is that in there? It doesn't make any sense to me. Wait, my art was designed for guys with three feet of sharpened steel coming at me. Hmm. This will work really good for a guy with a sword trying to cut me in half. Now it makes sense. All right. Or you're working on something else, maybe a ground technique, and you're like, I don't get this. This leaves my X open. But my art was designed for a spot where there's a referee to go, stop, you're not allowed to do that. Then it makes sense. All right? So sport martial arts are different from combat martial arts are different from tournament martial arts. Figure out why your martial art was invented. It'll help you figure things out. It'll help it make more sense to you. It can also occasionally help you realize, this isn't the martial art I wanted to be doing. Or, this is exactly the martial art I wanted. Or, my instructor is nuts. He doesn't even get why I'm here. Okay? Figure it out. It'll make you happy. It's a lot of fun. Okay? Sometimes it gives you a lot of insight. It's worth knowing why your martial art was invented, where it came from. Sometimes you can do it with a little bit of history. Sometimes it takes a lot of digging, a lot of bugging black belts, a lot of pestering senior guys. Sometimes it takes a crazy old guy from Burma who knew the inventor of your art way back when to tell you because nobody else knew. Hmm. How about that? Anyway, I'm Mr. James from Charm City Karate. Keep training. I'll see you next week.